Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you GD Script in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to teach you how to make your ball move along a platform with code. And by code, I mean GD Script. So first off, let me reset this up real quick. So I just turned snapping back on and then made the, gri the grid visible. Um, first off, we don't want to have this long platform anymore. We want to make sure it is flat and long. So to do that, you can hover over to see the shortcuts I'm going to be using. So I'm actually going to press E so that I can rotate it. And then I'm going to press S to scale it and make it almost as wide as the screen. You can see this blue outline is the actual screen when you press play. So I'll save that real quick. And then we want to open up the ball scene because we're going to be adding the script to the ball. So once we're in here, we want to add a script to the ball. You can do this either by clicking on the script add button up here or by right clicking and say attach script. So some things to check, make sure that the language is GD script and I don't like where this is sitting. So we're going to change the path, go up one level, create a folder called scripts and then save it in there instead. So now you can see that the script is going to live in the scripts folder. We can create this and now we have our first GD script. So I'll go over a little bit of what's in here. So extends node 2D means that this script is going to let you use anything that is currently in node 2D. It is going to be an extension of a node 2D, which means if you click over here, you'll get access to the transform, the Z index, canvas items, and node. So everything under here you will have access to. Um, after that, you can see, first off, there are comments. So anything that you put after a, um, whatever you want to call this, a hashtag, a pound sign, it is a comment, which means the code will not run it, or the system will not run it as code. It is just for you to keep track of things. After that, you can see that commented out are a couple of variables. We'll be talking about that in the next lesson. And then finally, we have a function. This function is called ready. And as you can see here, it's going to run the first time this node, meaning the ball node, enters a scene tree, which means basically becomes a part of the scene. Um, pass, you can ignore that. That just means that it exits the function. Down here, we have function um, func process, and it will run every frame, but we do not want that. We are actually going to be adding a new func called physics process delta. So I just pressed tab to make a new line or to fill it in. And so if you really want to know what this does, you can hold control and click it and it will open up the um, documents for you. So physics process is called during the physics processing step, so not the frame processing step. And the frame rate, whatever you set the frame rate to, is synced up to the physics. So that means that unlike using process, whatever you put in here is going to be consistent regardless of your frame rate. So just to see how this works, we are going to use a function called print, which is going to print to the output down here. And we are going to get position. So it will autocomplete a lot of stuff, but you don't necessarily have to use what they use. Um, as you can see, there is position. And if you go down, um, you can see that there are some getters and setters you can use. So I just said get position. I could have also just said position. So let's get position, save it, 
and it's attached to the ball, which means that it's attached to the ball in the main scene. And if we press play, we will see the numbers appear, but they don't change while the ball falls. So why is that? Well, if you look, the ball starts right here, floating above the world, and then the rigid body falls. The ball stays where it is, the rigid body is actually what is falling down. So we want to change that. Uh, we actually want ball to be a rigid body so that we can use that. To do that, we can right click on ball and actually say change type. And then we can do rigid body 2D. Once we've done that, we can select both the sprite and the collision shape and drag them up underneath ball and then remove delete the old rigid body so now we have a ball which the base of it is a rigid body with a sprite and a collision underneath that also means that we can say this extends rigid body 2d so we get access to all those fun rigid body functions that we're going to be using later on so now when we press play, we can see it gets higher until we stop. And that's because um, the way Godot works is this is zero, zero, and this is whatever the max of your screen size is. So as you go down, your Y value gets bigger. And as you go right, your X value gets bigger. So we're part way there. Um, we now get the position. So how do we change the position? Well, you can right click or uh, control click on rigid body and look through and see all the different things you can add. So let's use this set axis velocity. So what does that do? We come down here and set axis velocity will set the body's velocity on the given axis. Axis, okay. Let's see how that works. So if we say set axis velocity it takes a vector 2 so we will say vector 2 now a vector 2 takes an x value and a y value so this will mean it will move 10 spaces to the right and 0 spaces down and it will happen every cycle And so let's see what happens. All of a sudden, we're moving to the right. So up here, you can see ready. Set axis only really needs to move, needs to happen once. So if we take this, cut it, and replace it over here, it will run the very first time, and the velocity stays. The problem being there is friction. So while initially the velocity was 10, friction slowed it down. So let's go ahead and move this back down here. Add pass again. We are going to comment this out and use a different function. And that is going to be apply impulse. So apply impulse takes an offset, which we're going to say zero because we don't want, we just want the impulse to be in the middle. And then a new vector two, which is going to be the force that is pushed on it onto it every cycle. So let's just say two for now. Save that, press play, and you'll be able to see as it increases over time because of that impulse. And if we raise this up to say five, let's make sure that if we move this down over here, it speeds up as it goes along and then flies off. And you can actually see as it keeps going to the right and is now falling faster and faster. Good job. All right, you just wrote your own code. And now we are ready to move on to the next lesson where I talk about variables and constructors. 
which you've actually used, but I will explain a little bit more. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.